Hello, hello, hello. People are joining us already. That's perfect. 18 people, 19 people. Goes Lovely, so welcome quickly. everyone. It does, it's perfect. It means everybody's there ready and waiting. No messing around. 44, 47. Welcome back everybody if you've been before. Lots of hellos already appearing. Thank you. Lovely. <laughs> And welcome for the first time. If you're new, it's lovely to have new people. We've got more people signed up than ever before. So I know for a fact there's new people joining us today. Amazing. Lots of big hellos from people. Some names I recognize. That's really nice. Perfect. Lovely. Hi, guys. Hello. hello. Lots of lovely smiles and hellos. We're up to 64 sign-ins, which is usually about right because we have lots of people sharing screens and things. And we worked out, didn't we, Lizzie, the other day that we've actually got around 160 people who watch this, 170, and they sign in through about 60 screens because you're very good at sharing. Which is lovely. A little bit more, still people coming in, nearly there. Hello. Or oh, we're being told that people made journey sticks and everything. That's perfect. Awesome. Nearly there. Big smiles. Lovely. All right, Lizzie, I think we're just about leveled off now. So if anybody's late, they can still join. We're not going to exclude anyone, but we are going to start our session. So I'll hand over to Lizzie to say hello. Hi, guys. Nice to see lots of familiar faces or not faces, names, sorry. Um, and mm -hmm. also there's some new names that have said hello as well. So hi, guys. Nice to see you all again or hello if you're new, like Jacey said. So welcome to Explorers at Home. This is our third session. Oh, my goodness. Um, so each Thursday we are doing this at 4 p.m. for about 45 minutes and each th each session has different themes it's all on wildlife and nature and how we can get out more and how we can help wildlife as well it's just lots of fun some games some cool facts as well we love to throw in some cool facts um and we love to know stories as well if you do have any wildlife stories put them in the chat um but as most of us have had a dusting of snow. Let us know if you did see any wildlife tracks this weekend or this week, if you got snow. Um, and for those of you that are new, Josie's going to quickly tell you how you can get involved with the chat and also our polls as well, which we use in our games. Over to you, Josie. Thanks, Lucy. Really brilliant, brilliant. Okay, we've got lots of people already saying hello in the chat. So if you're familiar with this, please put a little message in there about what you've been up to for the past week. But if you're new, I will still say a bit of a proper introduction to how our system's going to work. So just for everyone's information, this session is being recorded and it may be made public at some point. We usually put the recordings onto our website so that if people miss out, they can watch at a later date. You are muted right now and your cameras are off and that's how it's gonna stay. But you can comment and give us a little hello in the chat. So at the bottom of the screen, you should see a little speech bubble and if you tap or click on that you can type as messages and it will say to all panelists and that's me and Lizzie we will see your messages but you can't see any messages from anyone else and that's also how it's going to stay but we can see your messages and when we get a second we like to try to reply I'm sure you can understand we are very busy trying to also present and manage polls and things but we will reply where we can and even if we can't reply, we love to see your messages because it lets us know that you're there, you're enjoying it, or any lovely stories you have to share is always really nice. Um, we can also interact through polls. So a poll is like a questionnaire. So I'm just going to do a little practice poll for you. So what I do is I click here, I click launch polling, and this should pop up for you a little poll, which is a practice poll. It's just a silly question and this one just for a bit of a practice is what kind of animals are lizzie and myself do you think we are frogs eagles aliens humans or squids <laughs> you can pick anyone you like this is just a bit of fun but this is a system we will use for games and things as well now if it hasn't popped up for you at all and you can't see that poll don't worry because we will always read out the question and we will read out all the options especially as our recordings don't show these polls either. So we'll make sure that even if it's not showing for you, you can still play along with all of our games and our questions. So we can see how many people have voted and on what as you go. 
nearly everyone's voted very few people left if you've got a thought put it in now you need to click the option that you're choosing from and then you put submit at the bottom and it will pop through and we'll get your answer last chance three two one and then we end the poll and then the best part is we can share your results so it should pop up now again with your answers so we've got some lovely answers here uh, i think most people think we're human <laughs> There's a couple of votes for squids, which is my personal favourite. <laughs> Some aliens, it could be true, it's yet to be proven otherwise. And that is our little practice. So I can stop that, it should disappear for everybody now. And hopefully that's gone for your screen. If it pops up and it's in the way, or if you're on a small screen, you can drag it out the way, click and drag that bar at the top and you can move it if you need to, if it covers anything you need to see on the screen. Okay, so that's the chat. <laughs> that's the poll if you need any technical help if something isn't working for you send us a message and i'll do my best to reply to you but as i say it's very hard to see everybody's messages in the chat i'll just try as much as i can if you get kicked out you can always email me as well and i'll try my best to help you but if it doesn't work at all don't worry because there's always the recording soon all right then is that everything i needed to say lizzie I think so. That worked really well. I can't believe we might be squids. That's a big surprise <laughs> for me. <laughs> be great fun though. <laughs> Love to live in the water. Okay, so um, for the theme this week, it is wonderful water or water for wildlife. Sorry, and it's basically all about water as you can guess, um, and the animals that might live in it. But first of all, I want to think about how you use water. Um, we use it every day and it's so important for us. We wouldn't be here without it and neither would our plants, they need water too. Um, and I want you to put in the chat, how did you use water today already? Put it in the chat and we'll say, see what you guys say. I know I have definitely flushed the loo, um, that uses a lot of water and I've also made a couple of cups of tea so I've used it to make drinks and things. We've got people saying washing up haven't we and washing their hands, perfect, always good to wash hands, cooking. What about you Josie, what have you used water for? Um, well I have some right here, oh you can't see it with my clever background though, there you go. <laughs> and I also well i had vegetables in my lunch today and they take some water to grow and this shirt that i'm wearing my uniform is made of cotton so you wouldn't think about your clothes but actually in the growing of the plant of cotton for the clothes and of the processing and manufacturing it all takes a lot of water actually it's way more water than you than you'd expect i suppose that goes into your life <laughs> Amazing. Lots of people using it to make drinks. I can see hot chocolate and squash has come up. Mm -hmm. But you're right, though. We don't think about where all our water is used and what our clothes come from. And it does take a lot to make our food. Taps and toilet. Yeah, you could even use it in the shower, the bath. If you're watering the garden as well. I mean, maybe not at this time of year, but in the summer and even in the summer when you're playing about as well, if you're in a swimming pool or something. Oh, and the radiator. I didn't even think of that. Nice work, guys. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. Bird bath. Nice. So um, great ideas. I love that. So it just shows us that we use it every day for lots of different things. And it's good to think about. It's really important. And in fact, we use so much. Each and every one of us, so just one person, uses about 80 of these bottles every day in water. So we use a lot of it. And that's just for flushing the toilet and coming out taps and things. That's not what Josie talked about with clothes or anything. It's incredible. Um, so just shows us that it's important for us, but also for animals as well. So we are going to share a poll with you in a second. And we want you to answer the question. The question is, how do you think animals use water? Now, you might have already talked about it with a bird bath. Um, there'll be some options that have come up if Josie pops it on the screen in a second. You can select just one. So read through them all. We've got drinking. Oh. We've got laying eggs, we've got cooling off, moving, breathing, communicating, washing, or all of the above. So what do animals use water for? We've got some results coming in. Nice. So do they drink it? Do they lay their eggs in it? Do they cool off on a hot day? Do they move about and use it to get to places? 
Do they breathe in water? Do they communicate as well? And do they wash themselves? Or is it all of the above? <laughs> Lots of answers coming in. That's nearly everyone. We'll give you another second. You can type in the chat if you want to. If we've re read out the answers and the polls aren't working, you can always type your answers in the chat because we can see that too. So three, two, one. All right, let's share those results. Oh, we got a nice mix. Nice. We have quite a few people say that animals use water to drink. A few have said other options as well, like washing, cooling off, moving, laying eggs. But most people, about 56%, have said all of the above. And you guys are right. Whatever one you clicked on, they all apply to animals, different animals, of course. So if we stop the thing, lovely. Mm -hmm. um, so animals can lay their eggs in there, like dragonflies will lay their eggs in the water. They'll drink it, of course. They'll bathe in it like birds in a bird bath. They'll move about. So otters might use the waterway to get around and also to find food. They communicate as well. Josie reminded me that, you know, sharks can smell blood from miles away. So they use it to find food. And also, if you think of whales and the sounds they make, then they communicate through water that way. But we've got a comment saying that some animals don't lay eggs, and you're right. So not all animals will lay eggs, but as a general, animals will, um, some animals will lay eggs. But it's a really good point. Thank you. Okay, nice work, guys. Gets us thinking about how they use water and also makes you think about what might use water as well because our game this week is a close-up look at some animals that we find in water and you have to guess what they are. Are you ready? So I'm going to try and share my screen. Bear with me. Oh, there it is. Okay, hopefully it will come up for you guys. Let us know in the chat if you can't find it or it hasn't come up, sorry. Um, and we can try and fix that. Okay, so we, I'm gonna show you a close up picture of an animal and I want you to guess what it is. Josie will put up a poll and you have to uh, select the right answer. So we've given you a couple of answers there. And the pictures of animals might be animals that live in the water or they just might use it to get about sometimes. So it's good to think about that. But they're ones that we find here in Surrey. So on our rivers and in our ponds, okay? So the first one is this. What do you think this animal is? It's got a beautiful eye. Looks like quite smooth skin as well. Remember you can drag that hole out of the way if it blocks the picture because it will pop up somewhere in the middle. We've got lots of votes already coming in. Ooh. We've got some guesses in the chat too. Nice. Owen Kilbride is very keen to say frog, frog, frog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that Owen might be a uh, Henry. We've got some Owens called Henrys that I've been chatting to. Lots of different answers. Lovely. And just give it a guess if you're not sure Give it a try, go on. There's no harm in trying. <laughs> awesome, Three, I think two, we're nearly done. One. Okay, I think from the looks of it, most of you said frog. Now, should we see the answer? Hopefully it will go. <laughs> There we go. It is a frog, a happy smiley frog. He looks very happy. <laughs> what a lovely frog picture. Well Couldn't done resist. everyone in the chat who got it right. Well done, guys. So we've got our frog. So let's see the next one. Give this one a try. It's a lovely yellow and black. I can see some sort of hair as well. Maybe a leg. Oh, <gasps> hairy animal. That's a challenge. <laughs> It's probably it's quite hard to um see these hairs though I might say it might be a bit smaller than That's a rabbit <laughs> we've got one uh one of my favorite things about this whole picture is that in the on the right hand side there's a sort of amber looking blob and that's actually a third eye that all of these sorts of animals have which is so okay. cool an, an eye right here even some lizards have that eye oh thanks Lizzie that's handy 
<laughs> oh, can you see my maps? That's I can, that's really helpful. <laughs> All right, three, two, one well on the poll, ready? And we'll share. Oh, okay. We've got a mix of answers. Most people said bee, some said wasp, and some said dragonfly. Well, the answer is it is a dragonfly. You don't see these very often. We normally see blue and green ones, but this is a lovely one. And it is a dragonfly. Hopefully you can see the picture that comes up. There we go. So just like that, they're beautiful, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful. I love dragonflies. I'll tell you what, they're one of my favourite things about summer is seeing one flying across the pond and things. If you guys have ever seen one, put it in the chat. We'd love to know. Beautiful. Okay, next one is this. Take a look. They are so, difficult. It's a challenging one. So what animal do you think this is? It could be a hippo. It could be a dog. It could be a beaver. Or it could be an otter. Oh, we've got a mix of answers. <laughs> and remember, it's all animals that we might find in Surrey. Yeah. And not <laughs> uh, and in the wild, not in a zoo. In the wild, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or in my in my garden where it's next one. <laughs> okay, you guys are nearly done. Keep going. Good job. Three. Two last little people done. Ooh, a nice mix of results. Some people said hippo. I wish we had hippos here in Surrey. A few people said dog. Some said beavers, and majority of you said otters. Okay, okay. Should we see what it is? It's quite tricky. I chose this um, picture because it does look like lots of different animals. I was trying to be a bit tricky for the older <laughs> kids. <laughs> it is an otter. <laughs> so well done if you said otter. No worries if you didn't. Well done for trying. Um, we could have done beaver, couldn't we? I, why, do we have beavers in Surrey, Josie? Do you know? Mm, not in the wild yet, I don't <sighs> think. But I might be wrong. And if I am, I'll correct myself in the email at the end of the session. Yeah, that would be <laughs> I, will I be sprung that on you, that. sorry. <laughs> it's okay, I like to learn. I'm always happy to find new things out. <laughs> so well done, guys. Okay, next one is this. Now, this is a super duper close up. Kind of looks like a leg. It looks like it's on the surface as well. I wonder what it could be. So the options are, if you haven't seen them, is a spider, a fly, a pond skater, or a moth. So what do you think it is? Nice, I think we're nearly getting there. You guys are voting so quickly, well done. Yeah, it gets faster and faster, doesn't it? So we can do it even quicker each time. Nearly everybody last vote. Three, two, one. Ooh, I think that's pretty much a washout for the pond skater. Okay, you guys are right. Some of you said uh, moth and spider too. So this is a pond skater. Maybe you guys haven't seen one before, but you normally see them on ponds, just on the pond surface, darting around and things. They're normally pretty jumpy as well. If you've ever done pond dipping and caught one by accident, mm. they jump out of your tray and go back to the pond. They're pretty cool. Do you know, I find it mad, Lizzie, that they can fly. And yet when we do do pond dipping and we scoop animals out of the pond with a net, they never really try and fly off. It's like they're the laziest, bounciest animals I've ever met. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> okay, so our next one is this one. Uh, Josie will put a poll up. What do you think this is? Is it a pond snail? Is it a slug? Is it a crab? Or is it a caddis fly larva? Now, maybe you guys haven't heard of some of them. Caddis fly is a pretty cool creature. I love spotting these guys. They make their own cases to live in out of all sorts of things, whether it's snail shells, leaves, um, whether it's two leaves stuck together or they chew it up and make it into a spiral and even um, like sand and things too. So they use all sorts of stuff to make their homes. They're incredible and really well camouflaged. Oh, they use sticks as well. That's what I was thinking of. This is a really difficult one. And I think everyone's agreeing. It's a challenging one in the chat. So last <laughs> people to vote. If you're not sure, throw a vote in anyway, because it's all just a bit of fun. We're not marking you really. It doesn't matter if you're wrong at every single answer. It's just a bit of fun. So last two votes, that's everybody. Here we go. 
Nice. Okay. Well, most people said caddisfly, some said crab, some said slug, and a few people said snails as well. So maybe I shouldn't have talked about the caddisfly. That was a bit misleading. <laughs> I feel cute. very mean. <laughs> it is a uh, snail. <laughs> but I do, for those that weren't sure what it was, I wanted to explain. Um, but as I said, some do make their shells out of snail shells, don't they? So you never know. It could have been one. You never know. But well done, guys. <laughs> Too <delicious. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, next one. Have a go at this. Look at that eye. Gosh, that's incredible. And I love that pinky colour. So what animal is this? Is this a newt? Is this a stickleback fish? Is it a frog? Or is it a shark? Hmm. Nice work, guys. You're voting quickly. Give it a go if you're not sure. Do you know, actually, Lizzie, one of our lovely colleagues called Pam has messaged saying oh, that yes. she thinks there might be two beavers being released on a national trust reserve near Hazelmere. And she heard about them through our colleague, Glenn, who does a lot of work on the rivers. So thanks, Pam, for the tip. Well, that's <laughs> exciting. I'm very oh, excited about that. Lovely. I think our beavers are in. Here we go. Let's share our results. Okay. Oh, nice. So majority of you said stickleback fish. A few of you said newts and frogs and maybe one person said shark. Let's take a look. So if we stop sharing. Boop. Lovely. It is a stickleback fish. Aren't they adorable? I think we've seen one of those before, haven't we, Josie? Have we seen one? Oh, we have. It's actually one of my favourites. I think some of you may remember, was it Spring Watch a long time ago? And there was Simon the Stickleback and I learned all about them there because the, the sticklebacks are really good dads. They will look after their eggs. So the female lays the egg and then the dad will come along and he'll keep that egg safe and fan it with his little fan fins and fan and fan and fan as much as he can to keep air in the water, keep the water moving over the egg so that they've got enough air to continue to survive until they hatch. And I love it. And do you remember, Lizzie, we saw one at one of our nature reserves at Bay Pond, I think, a while ago. And we sat for an embarrassingly long time, actually, happily watching a little stickleback <laughs> fanning their eggs. So it's always worth looking into the water for happy little fish. That is <laughs> amazing. I remember that. That was a lovely evening. Okay. Nice work, guys. And stickleback are oh, lovely little fishies. What is this? Oh, ho, ho. now it looks like a leg of something that might live in the water. Have a look. Is it a crocodile? Is it a newt? Is it a lizard? Or is it a water boatman? Now, remember, it lives in the water. That's a pretty key point. It does come onto land occasionally. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Lots of good answers in the in the chat as well. Yeah. M says she hopes somebody says crocodile. And I can tell you for a fact, some people have. So I'm very excited for our crocodiles in Surrey. Just <laughs> <laughs> two seconds. Caroline says definitely a crocodile. <laughs> Three, two, one, done. Let's share that. Okay, as you can see, most of you said newts, so over 60% um, of you guys, and I think you might be right. It is a little smooth newt, so beautiful. I love their patterns, they're incredible. And um, next week, top tip for you guys, our week is called um, Amazing Amphibians, so you get to see other cool pictures of newts and things then, um, just as a little insight for you guys who have attended. Okay, next one is this. I love the little hands and the little teeth. <laughs> so we've got, is it a water bowl, a beaver, a rat or a chinchilla? Now remember, these are wild animals that are in Surrey at the moment. <clears throat> I just love those little feet and the little claws. <laughs> They're very cool. I think chinchilla was my favorite. I love making up these answers sometimes. And I'll, I'll give you a tip, everyone. It's not chinchilla. But I really enjoyed that one. And, you know, I thought of chinchillas because they're so round. And this animal just looks so round, doesn't it? It does. Round. It does. Three, two, one. 
Okay. Whoa. Okay. So it's pretty close. We've got quite a few answers for beavers, for a beaver or a water vole. Most of you said water vole. Let's take a look. It is a little water vole. So not a beaver, but maybe if they are being released, if we did this again, it could be included if it's in Surrey. Who knows? Next time we'll have beavers. <laughs> we love beavers. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Um, so it's a little water bowl and it does look a bit like a rat, doesn't it? But these guys have furry tails instead of rats. They have smaller ears and their nose is sort of rounder and shorter as well. And they're very sweet and they tend to eat in the same spot I've read. And you can see lots of remains or bits of plant and thing that, that they've been chewing. Um, so if you remember last week, if you were here, we did tracks and signs in winter. But there's also lots of other signs of animals in the summer and things too. And one for water bowls is leftover bits of food where it's been munching away. <laughs> okay, this one, give this a go. <sighs> We have, is it a woodlouse? Is it a shrimp? Is it a lobster? Or is it a water hoglouse? Or we call them water louses as well. Every, they've got lots of names depending on where you live. So remember this lives in the water. Give it a try no matter what. It does look like it has lots of legs though. And I think, is that a little eye in the corner? This one here. I think is it is. Eye? I think you're right. Tiny little eye. I doubt they can see pictures like we can around, them, around themselves and form images in their minds, but they can definitely tell if it's light or dark around them, which is very helpful when you need to hide. Nearly done on our vote. Last two people, that's it then. Three, two, one. Amazing. Okay, we've had woodlouse, shrimp and lobsters as um, options, but most of you have said water hoglouse. And I think you might be right. So if I get ready, it is a water hoglouse or a water louse. So like the uh, woodlouse, if you did select woodlouse, they look pretty similar and they're related as well. But these guys just live in the water at the bottom of the pond. And the woodlouse obviously lives around wood and things. So you might find it in a log pile if you go mini beast hunting or anything. They're incredible. They are so lovely. And they're really sweet to watch as well. And they've got gills on their tummy. They're beautiful. Okay. I think this is our last one now. And um, again, it lives near water or in water. <clears throat> is it an adder? A lizard, a grass snake, or an ant eater? <laughs> what do you think, Lizzie? Don't tell me because you wrote the question. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. It's got a long tongue, so it could be an ant eater. <laughs> I like that little nose. I kind of want to boop it a little bit. Does I probably really wouldn't sing. if I saw one as much as I was tempted. <laughs> I love these, but you're right. I wouldn't want to just disturb them in the wild. I'll I leave don't them think to it, it would appreciate it very much. No. All right, everybody voted, Lizzie. Are we ready? Let's do it. Freya okay. thinks that one was easy. Here's the answers that everyone voted for. So some of you said adder. A few said lizard and anteater. If only we had anteaters in Surrey. And most of you said grass snake. So well done, guys. It is definitely a snake. So if you said adder, well done. But they um, aren't normally found swimming in water like. And if we stop sharing the results. Boop. So these guys are the ones that you normally see swimming about in the water. It's a grass snake and they are absolutely beautiful. I love that tongue. It's sensing and sort of um, smelling the air around it when it does that. It's incredible. They're beautiful. Maybe you've seen one in the wild just swimming across a pond and things. They're normally found near ponds and stuff because they will sit and wait for a juicy frog to come along. But they don't eat many. In fact, I think they can eat maybe 10 frogs in a year and they can survive on that depending on conditions obviously but so they don't eat many they're not they, um you know disrupting our frog life too much they're incredible predators love We've them got a super cool story come up in the chat actually i think tamsin langley was telling me that they went to 
uh, French and ponds, and one swam across the pond and came up onto the sand next to them. How cool is that? <gasps> I know, yeah. and Marley found one. She almost stepped on it, but well done for dodging. <laughs> and I think a couple of people have seen them. That's so cool, actually. It's cool. You don't normally get to see them because they aren't always around lots of people. So if you do get to see one, that's incredibly lucky and nice work for spotting it. Normally people will miss it as well. They just ignore what that, that little thing that's swimming mm. along the pond. Jamie's seen one, Coco's seen one. They are a lot more common than you'd think, I suppose. I've only ever seen a few, and it's when I'm particularly looking for them because they're very good at sneaking away, especially when you think that they, you're being very sneaky, but they can always hear you, and they'll almost always get away before you know, before you think you're going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> That's they're very so good. good at escaping aren't they they can hear you yeah they are very good at slivering away in the opposite direction where there's cover and things so they're pretty secretive to be honest um but nice work guys good job on the game good job for giving it a go even if you didn't know um our next thing is if you've joined us before we like to do a bit of art each week or a bit of craft shall we say and i'm going to attempt to do one for you live again so um, this time it's all about, it's used as water, but it's use, uses it um, in the form of ice. And actually some people who were here last week sent in their pictures of doing this. And it's like they are mind readers because we have this planned mm -hmm. for this week. <laughs> Great mind think alike. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen with you to show you the outcomes of what it will look like before I start shoving it all together because it's hard to show you once I've got it in, got it going. So let's see. Hopefully this will come up for you guys. Let me know if it doesn't. There we go. So we are going to be making natural ice decorations and we can send you this in the email afterwards so don't worry about taking lots of notes or anything and um, we'll show you how to do it and you get this sent to you as well but we're going to be doing things like this so we're going to be using natural materials to make these ice decorations that you can hang outside and then as it melts away because it's natural materials it's okay for them to fall on the floor and it the only thing you might need to pick up is the string or anything you use like that so we've got some more examples here. People have used shells and leaves, berries. We've got some sycamore seeds, beautiful. And this is from um, someone called Pam, who sent this in to us as well. Beautiful using flowers. So you don't have to do them just at this time of year. They just last longer because it's colder outside. So it's good to do them now. And this is from Alex, Amy and Abigail, who sent this in to us, the people that are like mind readers and knew that we were going to do this this week. <laughs> so they're examples of what you can do, but obviously you can do this whatever way you want. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. OK, so what you need is, let me get it. You need a tray or something to put your decorations into so I've got this tub here um, and I'm going to be using a smaller dish to put my water in this just goes inside so that if it does spill or anything it doesn't go all over your freezer it keeps it all contained so you want a big tub and your small dishes I've also used or been reusing things so I've got like an old um, soup container that I've put one in and this was from a dessert. So you don't have to buy anything, just use up what you've got. And then what you want to do, I'm gonna put it in here and put it on my um, desk. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. So um, just in case I spill it, I don't want it to go onto my laptop. So um, the first thing you want to do is to collect all your materials. So like last week with our journey six, you want to collect lots of different things. And because mine's quite small, it's only this big I have been collecting quite small bits so I went on a walk and I have found chestnuts can you see the chestnut case there kind of like a little hedgehog so put in the chat if you know what you would put on put into yours or if you've done one already let us know what you use can you see I've got a little acorn cup if I want to use it we've got I found these amazing seeds look at these they're cool aren't they they are called clementis or i think it's is it called old man's beard josie is that what it's called yeah it's clematis or old man's beard lovely so it's pretty cool kind of looks like spiders 
I've got some leaves as well. You can take your time with this and cut bits up as well. I've um, got some catkins. I've got some pine leaves and also seed buds. So oh, I've also got the cutest tiny little holly leaves. Absolutely sweet. So what you then want to do is once you've got gotten home and you've washed your hands, get your things together. So your uh, tub and your dish. And you also want to boil some water and then let it cool. So that's what I've done here. I've got boiled water and um, that has cooled down. Took a little bit of time, but it's cool now. And what you're gonna do, uh, you can either put the materials in first and add the water, but I'm gonna add the water first so that I can put the materials in where I want them. It might slosh around a bit as you walk to the freezer, but it's okay. So I'm gonna pour some in. Okay. Then I'm gonna add my things. So I love these little holly leaves, so I'm putting those in. Make sure they sink down as well. Oh, love the little chestnut case, definitely putting that one in. And you can even make this into a design. Um, there's something called a mandala, which is like a, a beautiful pattern that you can make. And people have been using this for years and years. And it's, um, just creates a beautiful pattern. You can do it with natural materials in the woods, all sorts. Um, I'm gonna put mine in pretty randomly though. I got some moss as well. I don't know if you can see that tiny. It's called star moss. And when it's open, it looks like a little star. It's beautiful. Okay, I think that's what I'm gonna put in. I'll put in one cat. Do you know the Latin name for that star moss, Lizzie, is polytrichum, which is one of the first Latin names I learned. And it helped me because it come, those bits come up in lots of different animals' names and plants because poly is many and trichum is hairs. That means many hairs. Oh my gosh. And it does. It looks like it's got loads of hairs. That's amazing. I like that. Okay, I'm going to put one of those in. Right, that's done. Now, obviously, I can't show that to the camera because it will spill water all over <laughs> the laptop. So I've got some less I made earlier. So bear with me. While you do that, Lizzie, one yeah. of our colleagues, Louise, has kindly been on Google just because I asked her to look up why we have to boil the water. Because lots of people have been asking us in the chat. And she's very kindly come straight back with a great answer, which is it stops it freezing with bubbles in it. If you boil the water first, it must get all of the air that's trapped in the in the water out. And then once you pour it into your thing and you freeze it, there's no bubbles or fewer bubbles, maybe at least. Amazing, that's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so in true Blue Peter fashion, I've got some I made earlier. So this one has melted a bit and it dislodges. A big point that I did forget, oh, it happens every time. Don't forget your string. And what you want to do, put the string in first. So don't do it the way I've just done it. And make sure it goes into the middle because this is what's gonna hold your ice decoration up. So sorry, I forgot about that, everyone. But here's the one I made earlier with the string in and it's dripping everywhere. <laughs> and this, hopefully I'm gonna put the pot underneath so it doesn't drip. Can you see? So I have added some fern and bracken leaves, some of those seeds as well. Kind of look like aliens frozen in ice. Goodness. It's really pretty, Lizzie. This is the first time I've seen it too, everyone, because Lizzie had them in the freezer earlier, but they look so good. That's beautiful. <laughs> I think you probably only need to leave it overnight as well before you take it out. I did run some cold water around mine so that it would loosen the ice. And you, you might have to be a bit water. patient. <laughs> um, warm yes, water warm and cold. Job. <laughs> <laughs> warm does it too. Uh, <laughs> And then I've got one I made earlier here, but I've realised that these have little dips on the side and it means that the ice at the bottom can't get out. So a top tip for you that I've just learned is you want a container that goes straight down. Otherwise, you've got to wait for it to melt a, lot, a while. And that's what I'm doing here. It won't come out just yet, but that's kind of what I've done there. OK, <laughs> we live and learn. We always love to learn. Exactly. <laughs> We make these mistakes everyone because we're so professional that we make sure you don't have to that's why 
<laughs> you learn through doing or seeing someone else do it wrong <laughs> so that is our craft for the week and you guys can do these at home I suggest if you can go on that walk and collect materials and also enjoy the wildlife and trees that you see while you're out just enjoy your time outside and then you can do these when you get back indoors um so I think that's it did we have any comments about like what else people would use Josie We've had tons, but Lizzie, it's almost end time. Oh I, I know. So I think if you set our challenge now, that would mm -hmm. be perfect. And then we could maybe end with our art. And if there's a sound for the week, which we don't have time for, I can always include that in our email afterwards. So don't worry if we have to skip some bits. You'll never miss out, everyone, because I'll always either like last week, we didn't have time to finish a game. So I turned it into a quiz online for everybody. You can always catch up <laughs> later on. Well, I tell you what, Josie, if I do the challenge really quickly, I think some people are asking if we are still going to do the sound. So maybe we can do it very quickly, but we won't do a guess. We could do a show you the sound and tell you what the animal is straight away. What well, let's think? see how time goes. See. We can't overrun. <laughs> OK, all right. So challenge of the week this week, because it's all on water, we want you guys to help bring water to wildlife. And even in the winter, it's not just summer that they need water. At the moment, we have bird, uh, bird baths and things out and they are covered in ice. So it's really good to break the ice or provide another form of water that's not frozen. But it's important to remember that ponds, um, if they are frozen over, don't break the ice there. It might dam harm or damage the animals underneath. So just things like bird baths or things with just water. So um, once you've done that, you can then also think about adding more water. The more water, the better. And I've got some ideas for you guys very quickly. Let's have a look. So hopefully this will come up on your screen. So, the other forms of water you can use if you haven't got them already is making a little um, shallow, making sure you've got a shallow dish of water for creatures like hedgehogs to drink from. They do wake up every now and then from hibernation and need a drink. So it's always good to have some water out. And it might be because it's so cold at the moment, it freezes quite quickly. So just check it each morning and you can always um, refill it or change the water then. And if you want to, you can help bees with this as well by adding in some rocks or even marbles if you've got them. Put them in the water so that they just break the surface. And this means that when bees do wake up in spring um, or they come out around spring or summer, that they can land on those rocks or marbles. And that's where they can then drink the water so they don't drown. They've got a safe place to land. So it's a really simple thing you guys can do. And you can even use things and reuse things. You don't need to buy new things. For instance, this is a video, beautiful video of a bird using an old um, brick that's just been filled with water for a bird bath. So they're not fussy, they will take anything. Okay, <laughs> it's beautiful. I love the way they slosh about. <laughs> Alrighty, so then you can think about what you want to add in spring. Obviously it's a bit cold now, so doing everything at once is maybe not um, the easiest thing to do, but this is pretty cool. And I just learned about it recently. It's called a hoverfly lagoon, and we'll send you a link on how to make one. But what you basically want is a, um, a waterproof or watertight tub. So like a milk bottle, a plastic milk bottle, chop off the top so you've got the bottom. You then put some leaves in it and some sticks that come out of the top and then fill it with water and put it in a quiet place in the garden. And you leave it basically, but you need it to smell a bit as well because this is what attracts hoverflies. And you want to attract hoverflies because they are amazing pollinators and they get left behind a bit. So normally they lay eggs in puddles and things, but by having this, you give them another option and the female will smell that water and think that's the perfect place to lay my eggs. And then they'll land on the twig. They'll then lay their eggs in the water and in that water, their larvae or their babies will grow up for a while and eventually they'll leave the hoverfly lagoon. So we'll give you a link on how to make it. Um, 
and it's a video that you can watch as well and it's pretty simple you don't need to buy anything new it's all things you can find in the natural environment and also just reuse an old tub or something okay and lastly you can have a pond. Now, I know not everyone has the space for huge ponds, but even little ones the size of a bucket or a, you know, like a washing up tub, they're really useful for wildlife. You just put in a plant and some rocks up the side so that creatures can get in and out. And this is perfect for frogs to lay eggs in, um, for dragonflies to lay their eggs in too. You might find that there's beetles living in there all sorts of things and even other animals might come to drink from your pond too so if you can we couldn't recommend them enough they are fantastic habitats for wildlife plus I love pond dipping so I just love finding out what's in ponds okay so that's our examples if you did have any questions feel free to email Josie and she'll pass on messages and things and we can work out how you can help um, your, with your questions and things but if you've got to them already that's perfect you can always add more all right so that's your challenge make sure there is water for wildlife put in the any questions that you do have in the chat we'll try and answer them for you as well um, but if we don't get a chance again we will email I think that's it um, I'm going to pass over to Josie I feel like a news anchor at the moment mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and have a go <laughs> All right, amazing, Lizzie. That's really lovely. We are a little bit over time, so we will save the uh, sound of the week for next time. Um, but I'll probably at least sneak a little one into the email. So make sure you get your families to check your emails because uh, we will have something in there for you to listen out to and you can tell us if you heard the sound. So check your emails for the sound of the week. Um, and basically that's it for us. We've got some lovely art to share with you as we finish, just like we did last week, because you've sent in some beautiful pictures, which I have been very much enjoying through the whole week in my inbox. I've been sharing them with Lizzie gorgeous things so I'll share those with you as we say goodbye now but other than that it's just a thank you from us as always check your emails because we'll give you the details for next week and a little recap and resources and stuff um please sign up for next week if you haven't already and share us with friends tell everyone about it I am going to be very busy sharing it with all the scouts and all of the schools that I know and trying to get this as full as possible so tell everyone and keep in touch with us on Facebook and social media because we love to know what you're up to it makes us very happy indeed all right sorry we rove everyone I hope it hasn't caused anybody any troubles and I will uh, share that little video with you now so bye everyone from me and bye from Lizzie bye <laughs> I can't wait to see these pictures <laughs> Amazing, that's beautiful. Oh. Do you know what, Josie? I do love the fact that with winter wildlife, you get all sorts of answers. And I love the robin there with the holly. That Very just... Christmassy. I like that feel. Exactly. Look at those stars, aren't they beautiful? Oh. Very happy, Robin. I feel very festive looking at this one. Robin's our theme. We love this one too. Look at the glitter, isn't it pretty? This one was taken by Alex of homemade fat balls and these beautiful long tail tits. Isn't that lovely? So I love long tail tits. They are gorgeous just the tail just looks too long for their body <laughs> and amy made a beautiful journey stick just like you and isn't it magnificent there's a big spray of pine all sorts going on there it's beautiful Hair wow. at the bottom she managed to put the pine cones on God, you're a lot better than me amy i couldn't do that <laughs> We've got these lovely art that uh, that was sent in. Look at these people so on the ball that they predicted what we were going to do this week. I wonder, Lizzie, if anyone will predict what we're going to do next time, huh? Mm. Well, we gave them a clue of the theme, so maybe they might come up with some ideas. <laughs> well, that's everything from us. Goodbye, everybody, and we hope to see you soon. Lots of love from Surrey Wildlife Trust. Bye.
Bye. Thank you guys. Bye.